Hello ladies and gentlemen, we are back with the Vishnu Sasanam playlist after a long time again and we are going to continue today with text number 17. If you have not watched the other videos in this playlist, you will find it above. Please watch them. All right. Sarva, Sarva, Sivasthanur, Bhuta, Dir, Nidhir, Abhyaya, Sambhavo, Bhavano, Bharta, Prabhava, Prabhuri, Ishwaraha. Lord Krishna is present everywhere and therefore he is everything, Sarva. He is supremely beneficial, Sarva, and he is most auspicious, Shiva. He is always very merciful, Sthano, and he is the creator of all living entities, Bhutadi. He gives happiness to all, Nidhi, and he is imperishable, Avyaya. He always thinks how to protect the devotees. Bhavanaha. Bhavana. Right. And he descends to the material world in order to protect them. Sambhava. He is the maintainer of the devotees. Bharata. And he is the origin of everything. Prabhava. He is the supreme master who can perform any feat impossible to the to be performed by Brahma or anyone else, Prabhu. And he is the supreme controller of all living entities, Ishwara. So all these words have been explained here. Note, in this commentary, Srila Balde Vidya Bhushan quotes Arjuna's explanation of how is Krishna, how Krishna is everything, Bhagavad Gita 11th chapter 40th verse. This verse says, Sarvam Samapnosi Tato Sri Sarvam. Tato Si Sarvam. O Krishna, you are all pervading and thus you are everything. Lord Krishna's appearance within the material world to protect the devotees is explained by Lord Krishna himself in the Bhagavad Gita, 4th chapter, 8th verse. Paritanaya Sadhunam Vinashaya Chadushkritam Dharma Sansthapana Arthaye Sambhavami Yuge Yuge. In order to deliver the pious and annihilate the miscreants, as well as to re-establish the principles of religion, I advent myself millennium after millennium. The Lord's killing of Hiranyakashipu and protection of the Pandavas by different tactics may be cited as examples of these purposes by the Lord. Right. That's the end of this text. <laughs> So, this is a very beautiful text like every other text of the Vishnu Sastana. Sarva, Sharva, Shiva, Sthanur. Right? Two words are used here. Sarva, Sharva. Lord Krishna is present everywhere and therefore he is everything. Lord Krishna is present everywhere. Why, why does it say this? Because uh, he is Vishnu himself and one of the meanings of the word Vishnu is uh, one who is everywhere. Vishwa Anu. Okay. Vishwa means the universe and Anu means every part where one who resides in every uh, bit of this universe. And therefore he is everything. Sarva. What does it mean when it says he is everything? Uh, it means that uh, ultimately what whatever we see or whatever we can figure out in this world from our eyes, nose, the hands or legs, whatever we can feel, we can listen, we can see, we can touch, we can smell. Everything is ultimately coming from him only. That is why it says he's everything actually. He's supremely beneficial, Sarva, and he's most auspicious, Shiva. So um, it said that he's supremely beneficial. Okay. Why? Because um, he's all auspicious. That's why he's known as Shiva also. The word Shiva is, um, the word Shiva means the one who is all auspicious. Okay. So that can mean Lord Shiva also in Vedic scriptures we know as Mahadev, one who sits in Kailash and does meditation. But here Krishna is also referred as Shivaha. So he's most auspicious. Even uh, you can see uh, wherever Krishna was uh, or any avatar of Vishnu, there was all auspiciousness always. If you check in the Mahabharata, in the context of the Mahabharata, you will see in the Kukshetra war that 
uh, Krishna was there on the side of the Pandavas and they were eventually victorious. And uh, even if you see during the Rajasuya Yajna of Yudhishthir Maharaj, uh, Shishupal had come and blasphemed Krishna, he had blasphemed Bhishma and so many other great personalities. And then uh, Krishna had taken his Sudarshan Chakra and uh, talked off uh, his head. <laughs> But there was not a drop of blood which was uh, which fell in the ground and if that would have happened the yajna would have become inauspicious so therefore krishna did surgery bloodless surgery <laughs> is there anyone who can do a bloodless surgery nobody right nobody can just do it only krishna can do it so even though he punished uh, shishupal uh, very badly very severely for his offenses uh, and for his sins but because he is Krishna himself, so he did it in a way which uh, does not impede the progression of the Rajasu Yajna. That, that's why he is known as all auspicious. Okay? He is supremely beneficial. Okay? So, in fact, uh, in the Mahabharata, before the Kukshetra war began, um, Duryodhan and Arjun goes to Krishna uh, to ask for his help, and then Arjun asks. To Krishna that I want you, not your Narayani Sena. And then Duryodhan very foolishly uh, becomes very joyful and says that, yes, okay, no problem. You, see. you take Krishna, I take Narayani Sena. And Krishna took a vow not to lift a weapon. So Duryodhana was such a fool, he thought that uh, Krishna's army is more powerful than Krishna himself. And uh, that's because of that, such a big blow he suffered actually. And uh, then when he went to Shakuni and uh, very expressed his joy you know, that, oh, this foolish Arjuna has taken Krishna and, you know, we have got the Narayani Sena, we have got the most powerful army in the entire universe, that army which even the Devatas cannot challenge, even the Asuras and Devatas combined, they cannot fight with the Narayani Sena, it was so powerful. One, one warrior of the Narayani Sena was equal to one, one Maharathi. So, but he forgot that it's Narayana Sena, but that's Narayana. So, he was such a fool. And when he said this to Shakuni, uh, then Shakuni said, uh, you're the biggest fool I have seen, you know. And Shakuni also said, you know, not all donkeys have horns. And then Shakuni said, this, this decision of yours have, uh, because of this decision, your defeat has been certain now you will be defeated. You cannot be victorious. Wherever there is Krishna, there is victory. This is, is not the word of some great sage. It's the word of Shakuni. <laughs> yeah, it's very surprising. They knew that Krishna is God. But still, that's how sinful people are. And even if they know, they still behave the way they want to. It's whimsical behavior. He's always merciful. Sthano. And he's the creator of all living entities. Bhutadi. He's always merciful. Even in case of Lord Ram, we see that uh, when uh, Vibhishan had come to uh, surrender to him, Lord Ram had a meeting and he asked all of the other Vanaras, like Sugriv, Angad, uh, Jambavan, and uh, Hanuman, what should we do? Should we accept him or should we not accept him? He is from the side of the enemy. And then most of the Vanaras... Um, suggested him not to take uh, take uh, revision uh, in in their group no, but then hanuman said that among the uh, demons also we have examples of prahlad and bali who are margins you know, who are great personalities so it doesn't mean that just because somebody is born in a rakshasa family um, we, should, we should just discard them right away it doesn't mean that so therefore uh, we should uh, we should consider him and, uh, and then Lord Ram also said you know whoever takes my shelter it's my vow and I will always give him protection so he's always very merciful when Vishan came he mercifully accepted him and there are so many examples we can keep quoting uh, like um, tons and tons of examples and he's the creator of all living entities Bhutadi. So from, uh, so from Mahavishnu, as you know, the universe has come out and then Brahma is there in every universe and Brahma does the creation of that particular universe. 
and our universe has 14 planetary systems as you know he gives happiness to all nidhi and he's imperishable avyaya he gives happiness to all even uh, satyavrat muni the great uh, uh, ascetic and great uh, sage he has written a very beautiful poem named damodar ashtakam where he describes uh, lord krishna's leela you know, ashtakam eight stanzas eight shlokas so in that uh, he says you know iti drikshva leela bhir anand kunde swagosham nimajjantam akhya payantam so it says anand kunde which means uh, the residents of vrindavan they are drowning in the Ananda kund kunda is you know it's like a well. Okay. Ananda means happiness, so it's like they are drowning in ecstasy of Krishna's love and his pastimes. So that's how he gives happiness to all, right? Um, and he's imperishable because there there's no instance in history that uh, he has ever faced defeat, and that is why. um these scriptures suggest that we also stay close to him because whenever you stay close to him uh, you will realize that because he is imperishable you will also be imperishable avyaya okay. he always thinks how to protect his devotees bhavanaha so how how does he protect his devotees well there are so many examples tons of examples but uh, one of the ins- most prominent instances which comes to my mind is uh, when uh, the kurukshetra war was going on and then uh, it was the day when jayadrath was killed you know and uh, jayadrath was hiding inside uh, and uh, the sun was about to set and arjuna had taken a vow that either i kill you or i will summon myself to fire So then uh, krishna had uh, invoked the sudarshan chakra and he had uh, blocked the last rays of the sun and because of that uh, jayadrath went into illusion and he thought that it's sunset and he came outside of the view which dronacharya had uh, kept him in and then the rest is history arjuna wipes uh, he chops off the head of jayadrath and jayadrath is killed so uh and then when jayadrath came out uh, before getting killed uh krishna removes the sudarshan chakra and the last rays of the sun fall in the kurukshetra battle field even uh, we see that uh, when hiranyakashyapu had tormented pralad maharaj lord vishnu had taken another avatar as narsingh dev and he just uh, ripped his intestines apart <laughs> he descends to the material world in order to protect them sambhavaha sambhava yes that's what krishna says i descend time and again in this material world to protect my devotees and we also see when bhishma was at the uh, prime of his prowess on the ninth day of the kurukshetra war and he was ruthlessly slaughtering the army of the pandavas then Krishna, although he had taken a vow that I won't ever lift a weapon, I, I won't ever. But he ran off the chariot and he took a wheel of another chariot and he rushed, he charged towards Bhishma to slay him down. And then somehow Arjuna stopped him. So <clears throat> he is the maintainer of the devotees, Bharata, and he is the origin of everything, Kabhav. He is the maintainer of the devotees, not only devotees, you know, everybody in the world. Why only devotees? But especially, he is the maintainer of the devotees. And uh, we also see that uh, even in the Mahabharat itself, we have the example when Duras Muni had come with his sixty thousand disciples to uh, visit the Pandavas. Then they had nothing to feed him. and then uh, dropadi had this akshay patra where there was one grain of rice remaining and krishna had put that grain inside his mouth and then the sages including durvasa they were totally uh, burping they were like full we can't eat anything as if we have eaten a big feast now right so yeah that's how he maintained uh, everybody the pandavas and he's the origin of everything yes of course he is 
He is the supreme master who can perform any feat impossible to be performed by Brahma or anyone else, Prabhu. That, that is why he is referred as Prabhu always. And he is the supreme controller of all living entities. Ishwa, the word Ishwara means controller. So sometimes Indra, Brahma, Shiva, they are also referred as Ishwara sometimes because they are also controllers to some extent. But uh, he, Vishnu is known as Parameshwar, which means he is the Param, he is the uh, prime controller, he is the supreme controller. Lord Krishna's appearance within uh, this material world to protect the devotees is explained him by himself in the fourth chapter, eighth verse. In order to deliver the pious and annihilate the miscreants, as well as to re-establish the principles of religion, I advent myself millennium after millennium, eighth shloka from the fourth chapter. The very famous shloka in India, especially most of the people, you hear them quoting the shloka, memorizing many children also know this shloka. So, so what is the thrust of this verse? You know, what, what, is, what is Bhishma exactly trying to do? So if you see in the last verse, Yogu Yoga Vidham Neta Pradhana Purusheshwara Nara Simha Vapu Shriman Keshava Purushottamaha. What did Bhishma say in the last verse? He is the auspicious reservoir of yogic perfection and success in yoga practice depends upon him. He is the leader of those advanced in yoga. Yoga Vidham Neta. He is the supreme controller of the material universe and all living entities. Pradhana Purusheshwara. Even though he has appeared in a half man, half lion incarnation, Nara Simha Vapu is extremely handsome. Shrima, he is the father of Brahma and Shiva and he is the supreme controller, supreme person, sorry, Purushottam. So if you see the chronology, you will see that uh, Bhishma is uh, he's very intelligent, he's very smart. <laughs> of course he is, uh, otherwise he won't be a Mahajan, he's one of the 12 Mahajans who is speaking this. So what he's doing is he is he's giving you more and more reasons why you should chant the Vishnu Sastranam, right? Giving you more and more reasons. So he's reinstantiating again and again and again. Sometimes you might feel that the words which he's speaking are somehow similar and uh, they're a bit repetitive. Why? He is trying to, because see what happens sometimes uh, in Kali Yuga especially, many, uh, there are many fake scholars, you know, fake uh, people who will, you know, try to twist and turn facts and try to uh, take you away from what uh, the core focus should be. Uh, so then in that case, what happens? You know, Bhishma is leaving no space. So what Bhishma is doing, you see, he is reinstantiating yoga. Uh, then he is again and again and again reinstantiating Krishna's position as the supreme controller of the material world. So even in the previous verse, he said, you know, he's the supreme controller of the material universe and all living entities. Pradhana Purusheshwaraha. Then, um, then again Purushottama, which means he is the supreme person. And then in this verse, he is reinstantiating his position again as, you know, he's the origin of everything, Prabhav. Then he's the Supreme Master. It's the same thing, but he is uh, trying to present from all different angles so that uh, there's nobody who can twist and turn the words of the Vishnu Sasanam and give their own interpretation. And um, he descends to this material world to protect them. So now he's reinstantiating his position as a protector of uh, the devotees and of all living beings. Okay. So it said uh, he's very merciful. So these, uh, so basically what he's trying to do is, Vishwa is trying to show how great this personality Krishna is. Um, because sometimes people, uh, they ask, you know, why, 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 why Krishna, why not somebody else? So then that's, that's the reason, you know, Vishnu Sasanam is the answer. So therefore, it's a very, uh, it's very beautiful and the commentaries which Balde Vidya Bhushan, who is one of the prominent Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas have given that, he, that, that is also very beautiful. Okay. So many times we uh, have great fear in life, what will happen, you know, my life is in trouble, it's terrible, I feel like dying, I feel like crying, I don't feel like living. 
what will happen to me but when you read such verses you, know, you will understand and for every word i have given you so many different examples from the scriptures otherwise you may think oh it's written but what's the proof you know where has this happened so i i have given you the proof for all the words almost all the words i guess from uh, from the scriptures when krishna has behaved in uh, the words which signify such uh, exemplary behavior like Yeah, he is imperishable avyaya yeah. he is the protector of the devotees bhavanaha and he descends to material to the material world in order to protect them sambhava he is the maintainer of the devotees and he is the origin of everything all right that will be all from my side if you have not watched the bhagavad gita videos and shrimad bhagavata videos i'll put it here uh, and as usual if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me you can go to my website down in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him just don't find him read it and then you shall find all right thank you